Hey, what's up, I'm Nizio Cole, and today I have a bit of a different video than what I usually make. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a game called Forspoken. Now, I first was made aware about the game at the reveal trailer in, uh, I think it was December 2021 at the Game Awards. I thought it was really cool, put it on my Steam wishlist, and didn't really think much about it until it came out. I bought it, but just never got around to playing it. I waited about a year to play it, not because of any bad reviews or anything like that, but just I'd gotten busy and I had a huge backlog on Steam that I needed to get through. And I actually hadn't seen anything bad about the game until after I played it and started looking up videos about it. So yeah, I beat the game like literally the first week of this year, thought it was super cool and started looking up uh, things about Forspoken and just see like a massive wave of just hate for the game, which I mean, playing a game that I like and seeing that other people don't like it isn't a, a new thing for me. Some of my favorite games, you know, include Quantum Break, Deliver Us Mars, and you know, the entire Watch Dogs series. So, you know, I'm pretty used to that, but at least for this game, it felt like the hate was disproportionately great compared to some of the other games I've played. Like there are a litany of YouTube videos and articles talking about how bad the game is and how you should never play it and how the, the studio failed. And I talked a little bit about this in my why I don't read Steam reviews video. Bad reviews don't stop me from playing a game. I mean, if I had listened to those reviews, I never would have found Watch Dogs in the first place. And I mean, some of these articles and videos were making the game out to be like the day before or Concord or whatever that ET game that caused the video game crash in the 80s was. Like people absolutely hate this game. So today I'm gonna be talking about some of the criticisms, what I think about them. Some I think are valid, some I think are less, but let's get right into it. Now the first one is performance issues. So from my perspective, I launched the game. It ran perfectly fine on my computer, which is pretty dated at this point. But you have to remember this was almost exactly a year after the game was released. They had plenty of time to roll out bug fixes and performance improvements, which is all well and good, but I strongly disagree with this release broken, fix later style of game development that we've seen over the past 10 to 15 years. And I've always been against it. If you go back on my channel, I talked about it in my Just Cause 4 review in 2018 and my Watch Dogs Legion review in 2020. And that one I had even more motivation to be biased towards. So that's one thing that I don't like about this game. Just because I played it a year later and it didn't really affect my experience at all doesn't mean that the game gets a pass. Because if you give your hard earned money to buy a game, the expectation should be that the game is a finished product and reasonably free of game breaking bugs and glaring performance issues. A quick aside, this is one of the principles that I strongly agree with and will be following with my game, The Standard Model. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you could wishlist the game on Steam. It would really mean a lot to me. I'll put a link in the description and I promise to you that the game won't release until it is completely finished and up to my quality standards because I have no publisher, I have no monetary motivations or, or time pressure or things of that nature. I'm doing it because I want to and you know, I'll delay the game as many times as I see fit, as long as it's complete on release. But anyways, enough of that, back to the video. Another reason why people disliked the game was the dialogue. People thought it was cringe, which I mean, fair, that's a subjective reason, but I really didn't have an issue with it. I mean, it just sounded like any other third person open world game dialogue, like it wasn't great, wasn't terrible. It wasn't super immersion breaking or just like so bad that it was just constantly pulling me out of the experience. It was just fine. I did think that the uh, cuff concept where you have this kind of like sidekick who also technically hates you talking to the protagonist, I think that that was kind of cool. Another criticism was that the world was generic. Personally, I don't share that same opinion, but I also don't play a ton of popular open world games. So I get if you've played a ton of games that are like this, that kind of have that fantasy, uh, monsters and elves and orcs kind of theme to it. I can see how that can get old after a while. Quickly, I want to talk about some of the reasons why I really like the game. Powers are really, really cool. And you know, it was one of the original reasons that I was attracted to the game. I usually don't like fantasy themes in media, whether it's TV or movies or games, and that's nothing against it. It's just a personal preference thing but I really liked the setting of this game, mostly because of the whole premise of, you know, just a normal person that gets sucked into a magical world, which honestly, this game might get me into more fantasy type games because I enjoyed it so much. The combat was overall very well done, and this is one of the best movement systems in a game I've played so far. I don't know how to explain it, but it really felt like I was less controlling the character through a controller and that I was the character. That's one thing that I think it does a lot better than, you know, say Watch Dogs, which obviously it's a more 
realistic game so you can only have walking and running but I felt like especially in Watch Dogs 2 the character controller and the movement system uh, wasn't as good as some other games that I had played. And also I just love just flying and jumping around in this game. I have a whole category of games on Steam that I basically just launch and play to just like run around and you know do something while I'm watching a video or something like that. And the last reason why some people had an issue with the game was that the protagonist, Frey, was a black woman. I don't like to get into politics on this channel and this isn't a political discussion, it's a gaming thing and it's just plain stupid. As a gamer, what games you like or dislike are completely up to you for whatever reasons you decide. I don't like the controls or I don't like that the missions feel repetitive or whatever reason you choose, but it feels like there's this new generation of quote unquote gamers who like to microanalyze and become outraged at every little detail of a game, calling it woke because there is a black character. I've been gaming for a while and this whole attitude feels completely new, at least in the past you know, two or three years. The reason why gamers is in quotes is because no real gamer even cares about this stuff, like at all. There are so many valid reasons you could have to dislike a game, but yet you choose the reason that quite literally has zero effect on gameplay. Like if it was that big of a deal, instead of whining about it on Twitter, you could just one, not buy the game, or two, just ignore it. There was something going on recently with some game where people were getting mad at the amount of options that there were in a character creator, as if you can't just choose the options you want and ignore the other ones. I mean, that's literally the whole point of it being a video game is it's interactive. You can choose the buttons that you press. I don't quite understand why people buy games that they know they most likely will not like and then give it a bad review. Or they'll play 2,000 hours and it's like, not recommended. Unless the developers did something that like ruined the experience later on. And this also could just be a loud minority on Twitter, which is probably a sign I should spend less time on there. I mean, half of their users are bots anyways. But anyways, rant over. That was pretty much all I wanted to talk about. But yeah, hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what your thoughts on Forspoken are down in the comment section below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.